And I, I would hate for someone to define me based upon one tweet response on one issue or or six responses on six issues. I think that uh, I think that when we all start to understand each other's principles and philosophies and how we how we think about these things. I think it lays the framework for us to come to agreement or uh, at least a constructive, cheerful consensus. So, you know, starting with the basic on Bitcoin, and this is my, this is how I view it, right? Everybody has the ability and has the right to view Bitcoin through their own lens and they have their own, uh, their own view of what is it, what is it for and why are they attracted to it? So, so I, I, you know, I'm not here to tell everybody else, you know, what to think. I'm here just to articulate one view of Bitcoin that I have that I've formed over the course of my life. And so I'd, I'd start with this observation. I'd say Bitcoin, it's an asset circulating on a network governed by a protocol based on or rooted in an ideology. And it, it provides humanity with a rational, scientifically sound economic foundation for the first time. So that that's what Bitcoin means to me, right? It, it is a rational foundation for economics for the human race. And, um, you know, Bitcoin with a small b is the asset. And we've created a digital asset and we did it with a protocol. And uh, the asset's no value. It is of no value unless there's a network for it to circulate on. So when I, when I think about the protocol, this is the way I look at it. I think Bitcoin, uh, it has three core protocols that are critical to the entire system working. The first protocol is a monetary protocol. The second protocol is a transaction protocol. And the third protocol is... What, I'll, what I'm going to call a power protocol, it's, it's sort of, it's near-term, real-time security. It's not security of the network over 100 years, but it's security over the network over 100 days or 100 minutes. It's, it's the here and now. So that's based on power. Who has the power over the network? So when I think about Bitcoin in general, well, there's lots of Bitcoin nodes and Bitcoin applications out there. Anybody can create a version of Bitcoin that runs on an iPhone, an Android phone, it runs on Linux, it runs on a different type of computer, et cetera. For them to be part of the network, they kind of have to share these three protocols. They're going to differ in lots of other functions, right? There are other aspects of software. For example, uh, compatibility. Is it compatible with this version of Unix? Uh, there's usability, right? Does it, does it run on the iOS and does it support like... Uh, you know, touch or not, you know, there's compliance. Uh, the version of, of, of uh, a Bitcoin wallet that runs in the United States, you know, by a publicly traded company, you know, will have KYC AML restrictions for the state of New York, which will be dictated by New York and by the U.S. So there's, com there's, there's differences in the software that have to do with compliance uh, there's going to be security differences, and these this is cybersecurity. Um, so there are, there'll be lots of Bitcoin uh, nodes, and they will all be different in different countries and different jurisdictions for different platforms. But the thing they all have to share in common is this common monetary protocol, transaction protocol, and power protocol. So the monetary protocol is is the asymptotically approaching 21 million right? There will never be more than 21 million. And there's a lot of, there's been a lot of focus upon, you know, the blocks of 50 and then 25 and then 12 and a half and 6.25 and the halvings, et cetera. BlackRock plans to invest $10 million into a seed fund for its proposed spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund. This financial commitment is part of the firm's preparations for the ETF anticipated launch pending regulatory approval from the Securities and Exchange Commission. According to Bloomberg Intelligence ETF analyst James Seyfart, the world's largest asset manager BlackRock has submitted an updated S-1 filing with the SEC for their Bitcoin ETF. The amended filing included details regarding BlackRock's movement prior to the Bitcoin ETF pending approval, aiming to inject $10 million into a seed fund 
To hold the seed movements do not mean launch according to SafeArt, BlackRock's e-round plan for the Bitcoin ETF would still obviously jive with our Jan. Approval prediction. It was also emphasized that even not yet named, the authorized participants will not be handling Bitcoin directly but only cash. The authorized participants will deliver only cash to create shares and will receive only cash when redeeming shares, according to a post by Bloomberg analyst Eric Balchunas. Further, authorized participants will not directly or indirectly purchase, hold, deliver, or receive Bitcoin as part of the creation or redemption process. But the truth is, I, I think about this not over the course of 10 years or the last 10 years. I'm not even sure the last 10 or 15 years matter, right? We're approaching the 15-year anniversary, but for the sake of our discussion, let's just say I accept Bitcoin as it is today, you know, through all of its twists and turns, uh, the block size wars, you know, et cetera. And I look out over the next 100 years as my short time frame, and 1,000 years is a reasonable time frame. So I'm looking at this as, as is this uh, a rational, scientific, economic framework for the human race for the next many, many centuries, okay? And when you look at it like that, it's very clarifying and it's simplifying. For example, once you look out, you know, a, a thousand years, you're like, well, what is the monetary policy? It's 21 million. It's 21 million Bitcoin uh, is the most it's ever going to be, and some of them will be lost. And that's the only thing you really need to understand about that. Someone wants to create a, a software program or a node that has a different policy than 21 million, they're breaking Bitcoin, right? They've corrupted the monetary protocol. Um, and, and of course, you can have infinite monetary protocols. You could have 5% inflation a year. You could have five, you know, five, un, 5 million Dogecoin a year. You could have all sorts of things if you wanted. Um, it, you can create a, a crypto asset or a digital commodity that has a monetary protocol which is inflationary or inflationary for 100 years and stops, right? All sorts of things. But in this particular case, Bitcoin's monetary protocol has gotten to be very simple. We're around 19 and a half million Bitcoin, but we're going to cap out at 21 million. So, so to, the truth is to debate all of the nuances of, of how you get to 21 million, is almost like second or third order at this point. It, maybe it was second order for the last four years. It's becoming third order. It certainly is less than third order by 2035 when 99% of all the Bitcoin has been issued and you've got 1% to be issued over the next 100 plus years. You realize that 1% is divided by 100 years is pretty de minimis. So, so the monetary protocol is, is a hard cap scarcity. The transaction protocol is the four megabyte blocks every 10 minutes, which works out to, you know, max, you're going to get to seven transactions a second or seven and a half, 4,500 transactions in a block is pretty packed. And so when you work back into it, you think, well, like a slow network is 100 million transactions a year and a, hard, a fast full network is 200 million transactions a year. And, uh, and the bandwidth is scarce, right? And the transaction protocol changed a little bit more over the last 15 years than the monetary protocol. The monetary protocol is, is pretty much pristine since, you know, Satoshi defined it. The transaction protocol, you know, jerked a little bit or, or, or adjusted with SegWit. And uh, Taproot sort of adjusted because they, they changed the theoretical bandwidth and the theoretical nature of transactions. What kind of transactions will the network process and how much bandwidth can it process? The third protocol is the power protocol. And in this particular case, it's not electrical power, it's computing power, but, uh, but what kind of computer power? Digital power. You can define all sorts of power protocols to control a network. For example, democracy is a protocol. One person, one vote. You know, aristocracy one rich family, one vote. Yeah. Violence, one gun, one bullet, <laughs> one vote. Right? The world's full of power protocols that, you know, the the deer with the antlers have their power protocol. Um the power protocol for the Bitcoin network is SHA two fifty six hashing, right? Uh, and um it could have been any other, right? It could be a proof of stake protocol. It could be all sorts of all sorts of other interesting power protocols. But the question is, 
who at the end of the day gets to create the block every 10 minutes? And what kind of power do they have to project in order to create the block? And, you know, if I, if I had an algorithm which was a CPU-friendly algorithm, right? It's a, a non-GPU, a non-ASIC-friendly CPU. Well, then, um, then you're allowing any general-purpose computer to participate and generate that computing power. 